on Opening Soon by Design. A New York architect muscles up some wow factor in South Beach. We also wanted to put it inside of a sexy container. Seduction is the name of the game. Certainly it's driven by my passion. But Florida heat in the dead of summer raises tempers. Somebody better come up with my damn keys. There's not enough progress back here right now. I mean, that's not, that's actually not good. South Beach, Miami, land of hard-bodied beauty, and this is the Beast. A raw concrete shell the size of a city block is about to get a multi-million dollar makeover in just five months. We just want them to come in and say, wow. Architect Paul Boardman is the golden boy at Equinox Fitness. When he came on board a decade ago, they had only three gyms in New York. Now, there are 32 across the country. He's rethought how gyms fit into our lives. It is really a third space that's neither home nor work, but it's a place that is equally important in somebody's life. It's the one time in your life that you're actually investing in yourself. And so the interest as an architect in that is how do you define the experience of a third space? Miami gives Paul a diverse palette to create his third space. It has wonderful influences of, of Brazil and, and Latin America and Havana and these kind of undercurrents are just wonderful things culturally that, that provide a rich and, and frankly sexy environment. And when you find something that has those layers of meaning, that's, that's, really, that's really great, like you hit a home run. Adding layers of meaning comes through creating eye-popping design. That'll obviously be a challenge, but Paul was drawn by the potential. It's a large space, and, and for Miami Beach, it's very unique. That was one of the things we were most attracted to this space in particular, was that we got this very powerful urban loft feel. Paul's big vision is to make the gym experience aesthetic. From handmade tiles to original art, cool clothes, high-tech entertainment, even full spa services. We also wanted a sexy container, something that was compelling, uh, edgy, something that was more a club. And fitness is more than just sitting on a treadmill for 35 minutes. One of Paul's biggest challenges here is creating many environments within one big space. Within the, the fitness environment, you know, we have yoga here, which inherently as a studio is going to be more relaxed, uh, more contemplative, uh, more zen in its, uh, in its music approach. And then on the other side, it's just, you know, thump, rock and roll, let's get you, let's get you up, let's get you moving. The locker rooms will be twice as big as in other gyms. But we feel that the locker room experience is, is a special time when someone's, you know, frankly, very intimate, they're naked, you know. And so you have to make that experience as, uh, as pleasant as possible. A high-end gym is more complicated than it seems. There are huge laundry facilities, massive plumbing in the locker rooms, and ventilation and cooling for that other gym thing, sweat. You've got patrons perspiring, you've got spas, uh, you've got all this water vapor producing element happening in a, in a gym or in a club like this. Filling out Paul's core team is local contractor Greg DeJohn. He's got problems, beginning with a shortage of workers. Manpower is tight, prices are up, uh, building departments in South Florida are increasingly difficult to work with. The enforcer of Paul's vision is Frank Smith, an ex-Marine from the Bronx. Great guy to work for, great vision. Before Paul came on, we were building one club every eight months, sometimes one club a year. Now we're building one club every two months. So Paul's responsible for that. The gym is on the second floor. The only way up is by elevator. So Paul is building a stairwell to create a grand entrance. When you come into the facility, you want to be hit with the energy because you know, you've, you've had a long day you're, or it's, it's early morning and you're trying to wake up and you really want to be invigorated in coming into the space. Because I'm sure it's just, uh, it's just a touch. To keep Paul moving even faster, Equinox marketers are already selling memberships. He needs to be sure customers will have a gym to go to. There's a lot of pressure, there's a lot of pressure, but it's good, I mean, that's why you do it. I mean, you don't do something without a deadline. Once we advertise, 
people want to use the product and they don't want to wait a certain amount of time before they go somewhere else. Paul has staked his reputation on turning gyms around quickly and like an athlete is always pushing for more. You want to raise that bar a little bit and so it uh, you, you know if you're a high jumper you jump seven feet you want to jump seven two next time and so uh, you never know if you, you're going to do it. One major snag. Paul knows he's already behind schedule. Construction hasn't even begun. You know, we, we walk through the site today and there's nobody there. So that's a little nervous thing. You know, you could say, well, there should be 20 people here today. Opening day is four and a half months away. This isn't tile. Tell him you'll do anything he wants. This is construction. Things like this happen. <laughs> South Beach, Florida is the capital of Art Deco, but Equinox architect Paul Boardman has a different inspiration, Latin American modernism. It was just edgy and out there and very aggressive. And in that, they didn't decorate it. They didn't make it cute. They didn't make it polished. They really made it ballsy. It's a vision that fits well with a luxury gym being built in a bare concrete space. Uh, we've set up the main entry stair, we've cut the opening. It's been one month. It still doesn't look like much, and Paul knows how much work lies ahead. To create something that in the end looks effortless often takes hundreds of hours of extraordinary effort. And the, and the process of great design, in my mind, is editing. Good morning, At Equinox headquarters in New York, Paul has a creative team to flesh out his vision. There's an enormous number of people that contribute. Uh, certainly, it's driven by my passion. And we're not switching back and forth. This is going to be in the laminate throughout the club. It's going to be reception desk, spa, um, locker rooms, how bins. I think the flavor of the architecture, we're sort of the 50s with a more modern twist to it, with a Cuban twist to it. Equinox Director of Architecture, Ramon Chacon, spends a lot of time scouring the city for the latest and cool detailing. Today, he's looking for the perfect countertop for the locker rooms. Even if you wanted to customize that pattern as well, or they have stock patterns that you can choose from. They, they have their own stock patterns. Uh, they have some wider um, grids as well, okay. a lot of different colors. But I, I'm pretty sure they're open to customization. Material Connection is a designer's playground. You name it, they've got it. From neon plastics to innovative ceramics and metallic textiles. It's actually a nice material. It's uh, made from about 85% recycled glass. The rest is cement. Increasingly, designers and interior architects are first thinking about the sort of materials they want to use. They are letting that inform their designs. Back at the office, Ramon goes through every single detail with the rest of Paul's team. So here we have three different versions of our tile patterning for the back of the, of the showers. The shower areas are, are very important and when you're most exposed and you want to feel comfortable. It's one month later and back on site, the locker rooms are becoming a headache. There's not enough progress back here right now. I mean, that's not, that's actually not good because it's, um, there's a lot of work to be had back here. Turns out, Miami's one of the toughest places in North America to build in, starting with the weather. With no air conditioning, it's over 90 degrees in here. Uh, well, we've taken two windows out, and then we've got uh, these 48-inch fans all over to help circulate the air. It doesn't really work, and everybody's getting cranky. Well, that, that Anthony, it's Paul. Hey, wh why aren't you calling Frank uh, Smith directly? I got my email. He says he don't have my phone number. Okay. I'm waiting patiently for him. We got to get some air conditioning in this space, man. We're Two and a half months to go, and problems are adding up. Now, an inspector is forcing Equinox to insulate the entire ceiling. Whatever works best, rather than trying to slide that shit in there, I don't know about that. A whopping 16,000 square feet of paneling has to be installed. And Miami's construction boom means there's a manpower shortage. It's not fast enough and furious enough for us. So we're, we've uh, asked Frank to come down and uh, spend more time than he would normally to, uh, to push things along in his uh, unique way. 
Call him up right now and tell him you'll do anything he wants. So in the next month, we need to pick up, like, we need to get about 25% of the work done, or else we'll be in trouble. Frank could use some good news. The first shipment of tiles has arrived today, or so he thought. Somebody lied to me. Hey, Frank. This isn't tile. This, this is lights. I need that contact number for the um, tile. This is construction. Things like this happen. <laughs> With wrong materials being shipped, a labor shortage, the locker rooms backlogged, duct work not done, and a deadline that won't budge, the crew at Equinox is in for a long, hot summer. And it's only June. Things are going to get even hotter. Opening is two months away. And it's hot, it's, it's, it's hard to keep perspective sometimes. Somebody's not reading the plans right. I just wanted to let you know that our club's opening on September 15th. At Equinox, Miami's next luxury gym, the sales office is doing brisk business. The promise? Open for business in one month. And that means architect Paul Boardman is under the gun. You have to deliver what you say to the marketplace. And we make promises to the marketplace to say that we're going to be open. And when we say that, we have to hit that deadline. All good? Actually, right now, Frank has to hit the deadline. Somebody's not reading the plans right. Paul is away for a week and is expecting big progress on his return. So it's all on Frank's shoulders, and he's not happy. Paul, that's what actually Paul does. He, you know, he deals with big issues that's uh, above our, our, our um, job description. And uh, once he hashes that out, he just leaves it to the, I guess, the foot soldiers in the field to actually get stuff done. They're slogging through the hottest August on record, still no air conditioning, and tempers are flaring. Somebody better come up with my damn keys. And it's hot, it's, it's, it's hard to keep perspective sometimes. But there is forward movement. Some of the gym's luxury features are being installed. Rubber flooring in the workout areas reduces stress on hips and knees. The massive water heaters to help supply constant fresh laundry are in place. Water heaters are tremendous. They're like this big around, they'll, they'll do a 40-story building one. We've got two of them. Installing the tile has been a problem. Frank's had to throw his weight around. We've had to remove a tile contractor on a job he wasn't performing and, and, and bring, actually bring in one of our floor contractors from New York. Tiles are, are great because they say so much about craft and they say so much about, about care in putting things together that someone has to make a mosaic and put all the pieces together. In terms of the color, we're going for this Latin influence. It's deep reds, it's beautiful oranges, it's vibrant greens. There are huge amounts of tiles, four weeks of work. Problem is, only three weeks left. This is crunch time. What? You gotta get out of there by 12. The painter says you need more prep work. You want to talk to him? And they work on up until 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night. Electricians are working 10-hour uh, days, seven days a week. All your guys there now. So you Frank is worrying his efforts may have been too little too late. If I had a little bit more control in the beginning, I could have, there's a few things I would have changed. But, you know, overall, if it opens, we're successful. And then we'll go down there. With 24 hours to go, Paul is back in Miami, feeling pleased with the way it's turning out, at least for now. Well, it, it, it's come to life in a lot of ways, uh, literally and figuratively with a bunch of ants running around it right now. But uh, you start with something on, in drawing form, and you realize that eventually it comes to something that's, uh, that's real. The design details are coming together. We have these lights that kind of look exposed, but they're not. They have a very sophisticated level of, of uh, shielding and lenses that are in them, and the coloration is quite beautiful. The lockers have been custom designed to allow extra space to hang clothes. But in a space this big, there's still a lot of detailing to do. The juice bar equipment arrived yesterday. So suffice it to say, we're installing it as fast as we can. <laughs> 
And then there's all those fitness machines. Like your furniture at home, it's never in the right spot until you move it a little bit, you know, and these pieces of furniture weigh a couple thousand pounds. At a time when work coordination is key, everybody's talking, nobody's listening. I don't have any flat metal. The they're right there wits end and a lot of things that, you know, inspectors come and they change stuff or things get missed and they have no time to get it done. So and we're pushing them to get it done. So everybody's a little uh, on edge at this stage of the game. Rip it out and trim it. Cut it nice and, and do this. You can do this now. It's not a big deal. But the biggest problem in here, down this hallway, into the women's locker room. Oh, yeah, yeah, we've got some excitement in the bathrooms, yeah, yeah, yeah. The first stall was built too large, so the last one's too small. The inspector won't pass it. With 20 hours to go, they're ripping down walls. The noise in the background is indicative we're supposed to be in a finished locker room and we're tearing down walls right now. I won't be excited until, uh, until we open tomorrow. The opening cannot be delayed by even a minute. Why we're opening at 2.20? It is, a, it is a time that is uh, selected by an astrologer. And it's a, it's a tradition that, uh, that, that's been since the beginning of the company. It's the time when day and night are of equal length, and that's called, appropriately, an equinox. Opening is exactly 18 hours and 42 minutes away. I'm not worried about how much it costs. I'll tell you that right now. You can give me any kind of ticket. I'm not worried about how much it costs. I just want to know if you're able to do it. And I'll show you now who told you. It's opening day for Equinox Fitness. Architect Paul Boardman and his crew are feeling the burn. Uh, we were here all night. Um, I, I, I left at about 3 or so but uh, and was back here uh, about 6, but my guys were here all night. And now they're getting stressed and bossy. Do it in five minutes. Put that unit back. Put that away. Put that back and wait five minutes. Yeah, I get paid. We want to make sure the contractor survived the last uh, day. Not so much us. All that stuff that's down there should be into the sales office. We're good. OK. We should grab, uh, we should grab two cleaning people to hit the face of that thing. We just need the front of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta do this. OK, we're going to do that. OK, good. We are now two hours and, and two minutes away from opening, and, uh, and we've got about nine hours of work. So we're cranking. Frank will do just about anything to get the washrooms ready. Even money is no object. I'm not worried about how much it costs. I'll tell you that right now. You can give me any kind of ticket. I'm not worried about how much it costs. I just want to know if you're able to do it. We're doing this because somebody cut another piece of the floor out, and we're missing a piece. Despite the last minute effort and attempts to rebuild the wall, in the end, the washrooms aren't ready. With only minutes to go, the inspector gives a temporary certificate of occupancy. It's a great time for any business. When you open, you want, you know, you, you, you want to see somebody come in and say, wow, that, that's, that's amazing. At exactly 2.20, Equinox opens. this one and I was like, I'll hold off until this one opens because everybody sounded so positive about it. Everything looks good, the colors are coordinated, everything looks proper, everything is neat. Yeah, visual, visual appearance is really good and I can see that this makes a big difference over here. I take pride in, uh, in what we've built and there's nothing better than to see somebody who is experiencing it and saying, wow, this is just an amazing thing. Whether it's a, you know, a fresh flower that, that is presented in a vase, uh, or it's a beautifully selected tile, or it's a wonderfully clean shower, all of those things say so much about our interest in pleasing the member. One of the things that we wanted to create is this kind of raw feeling, and I think that we have captured that, that there's a certain rawness 
into the space. The concrete beams that are still raw concrete but juxtaposed to the finished wood panels. Stairs are places that people can stop and say hello and say hi and say bye. And so we've made this generous stair that is also a social event in the club. More than 500 people come out to celebrate Equinox's grand opening. And while Frank is getting ready to move on to his next gym project, he does take a second to enjoy the moment. It's a good feeling, but it's only going to last 48 hours. And for Paul, this architect's ultimate mark of success is having people interact in his new space. You see it, it sets the stage for great energy, it sets the stage for a sensual experience, and, and it works. And we've got four more to go before the end of the year. And uh, so we're, we're focusing on to the, the next things, but tonight's a, a moment to take a pause and, and appreciate what everything's been done and, and, uh, and really enjoy each other's company. After a lot of sweat, Equinox is ready to show its muscle. So you have the plans and you're going to bring them down. Okay. All right, what time what time are you going to be here? I'm standing right I'm standing right in front of him right now. The better. You don't you don't have another minute. Okay? All right, thanks. So, what else? 